Christine, why don't you start off by telling me why you're here? I'm here because I have had a constant headache since 2002. Um, I have been to many different doctors and dentists and chiropractors and everything to see what was the cause and there's never been a cause. It just is constant and it like the whole top of my head feels very heavy pressure like someone's tightening a cap on my head and sometimes there'll be little sharp <laughs> jaggedy things that go in but that's not right now. Right now it's just the constant pressure. Okay, so does it get worse from time to time other than just the constant always yeah. there? Yeah, some days I'll, I'll just call it a, a bad head day, you know, it's a bad head day and so um, when it's really bad I just lie down because there's not a whole lot I can do. Um, I have, the only thing that's helped was the neurostimulator, so that's implanted in the back of my, base of my neck connected by wire to a battery in my hip. And I have different programs, one I use kind of for daytime and one for night. Um, but it's on all the time. And uh, my, like when I lay down at night after I've turned it down, my headache will be worse. But I, if I leave it on, I'll have strange dreams. <laughs> so, you know, it needs to, I just need to mellow out for, for the nighttime. But, all that does, it, it somehow, I think it distracts my nerves so that, I don't know why, but I, I don't have as severe a pain. So a good day it would be a level three pain, three to four is normal, and a really bad day is six. But it used to get higher, so okay. it's all, I, all, I can function. It just, I have a headache all the time. Now, how long has the neurostimulator been in? Since 2010. Since 2010, so for six years. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And has it been consistent that it's more like the crown or the top of the, mm -hmm. the head? Okay. Yeah, and when they in implanted it, they actually kind of wake you up a little bit um, to see if you can feel it. And where, and I could feel it, but it didn't. nothing goes up here. But when I put my, that's funny, when I put my hand on top of my head, I can feel heat, kind of just energy emanating from it. But, so it doesn't, nothing touches the, the area that hurts, but it does enough to make it tolerable. And so you're able to wash your hair and not have any pain or anything like that, it's right? It's not pain, it's not pain to the touch. No, my head doesn't. It's it's deeper, it's inside, yeah, it's, okay. the skin sen is not sensitive. Okay. I, when I, I did therapy too to see if maybe, you know, it was all in my head, which of course it is, but um, I, I talked to different parts of my body and this is called Superdome, the headache area, I just called it Superdome because, and Superdome refuses to leave. Okay. So did you, were you able, I guess that's like a, a biofeedback type of uh, therapy? It's, it, it wasn't even biofeedback, it was just, she would tell me to, she would like be the different parts of me and I was supposed to respond and um, so you kind of talk to yourself basically or talk to parts of your body. Um, now, so did you get relief from other parts of your body and just not Superdome? No, I mean, <laughs> Well, I don't really have any major issues with my body. I mean, I guess I do, but you know, ongoing, it's not an issue. Okay. So, no, everything I have done has been to find the cause or relief from the headache, and nothing has had any impact but the neurostimulator. Okay, that's fair. So, tell me about. Um shoulder aches, neck pain, what's going on there? Well, I always have, it's like in here and in my shoulders. Um, part of it's the way I sleep, I think, but 
and as I told you, I had polio when I was a kid, so I walk a little crooked, I walk a little funny, so I think that all, you know. Just, Might have something to do there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you notice that you clench at night? I clench all the time. I notice, I mean, I, I didn't think I did, but then when I started paying attention, I, oh yeah, I clench a lot. Okay. Do you ever think that um, part of the head headache or tension in the head could be related to your bite? Not until recently, because I did talk to my normal dentist about my headache, and I did have my teeth straightened through Invisalign, and that was nice. My teeth got straighter, but it didn't have any impact on my head. So. So the Invisalign was done more after the headache was there? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was just one of the things I tried. Um, and it wasn't until I talked to a nurse, um, uh, was intake for a minor surgery I was having, and she had, a, she said, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about when I was talking about my head pain. And she, I said, you do? And she said, oh yeah, I used to have it. And she had it in the same place. It was also the top of her head, and I said, well, what did you do? And she said, I went to a dentist, and he, it, it, she told me later, it was about 20 years ago, but he fit her with a bike guard, and her headache went away. So I thought, okay, well, I haven't tried that, so let's see what it is. And I actually did uh, an online search. Because I live in Florence on the coast, which, you know, there's no TMJ specialist there, but I just did a, a Google search for TMJ specialist near me, and Dr. Sutter was the only one that was anywhere near me. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, um, do you have any questions before we get going? No, I think I understand the process. Okay. Um, just see how it goes. Sure. And um, is it fair to say that the headache is probably your number one complaint, your chief complaint? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Christine, you're back with us today. Uh, your original DTR revision was done uh, about a week ago yeah, today. And um, I wanted to see how, what have you noticed since then? Well, the first two days um, I kept my stimulator off, which I haven't done since I got it in 2010. I mean, it's been on and occasionally I crank it up. And so when I um, it was around noon on Saturday, and I could just, I could just feel it coming back, and I thought, I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to turn it back on. But the interesting thing is, I did turn it down a couple notches, which it was like when I turned it on, I felt, oh, that's pretty intense. 
So it's been on the lower level, but I've had it on since Saturday. On Saturday, okay. And then um, how has eating been? Any changes with eating? Well, the interesting thing I noticed today is I was chewing on my right side and I haven't chewed on my right side since I can remember. So it was, and I thought, well, I'm chewing on the right side, should I move it over to the left? And I kind of started to do that and I thought, no, I can chew on the right side. So I kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, I, I have discovered that I found a way to clench my teeth. I mean, I would wake up in the middle of the night and know that I'd had clench. So even though initially I felt like I couldn't, I find a way. During the day even, I find a way. Well, now, so I would ask you the first two days that you had after the revision, could you find a way? I don't think I did, no. No. So the bites changed. Yeah. And well, what's what's happened is the muscles have relaxed. And so the mandible, the bottom portion of the jaw, is sitting a little differently in relation to the top. Well, that throws the bite off. So now you can clench again. Oh, yeah. And you can cause problems. Yeah. This is probably the reason why the neurotransmitter is back on. Yeah. So what we'll do today would be a really interesting experiment is to do the same thing we did. Look, after we do the procedure, if you feel the relaxation again, turn the neurostimulator off. Did you bring the remote? I have it. Perfect. I turned it off yet, but I will. You, okay. And the other interesting thing is I did have some achiness in my right jaw, which I took some Tylenol for, for that. And again, my, I don't usually use the right side very much. I use the left, so that probably had something to do with what you did with the muscles and stuff. Absolutely. Because if you're avoiding one side, and all of a sudden you start using it. Using it, it has. Yeah, to, it's, it's like, going to oh, get tired quicker. There's, there's no stamina on the right side. Yeah. Okay. So, Christine, you're you're back with us. This is kind of a six month post op, and um, I wanted to just check up with you and see how um, things were going. Uh, you kind of have an interesting story, and uh, two things going that I thought would make this interesting but at the same time very challenging is the history of polio so we have some skeletal issues that we're dealing with right. in order to get this uh, uh, where it needs to be and then the second thing would be uh, placement of a neurotransmitter right. to help with head, head, pain. head pain right right tell me what's happened since we left off last well for the most part I have not used my stimulator. Um, it's really interesting when I turn it on, it has like a little vibration that you feel in your head. And now I don't like it. I mean, it, the, it bugs me. So if the stimulator bugs me more than my headache, then I'd say we turn it off. And so I've kept it off for most of the time. I. The two times that I remember turning it on, I think I had infections. One was a sinus infection and one was a, 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 an infection with the salivary, salivary gland down here. And afterwards I thought, well that makes sense, you know, you're creating a lot more pressure inside your skull with both of those things. So um, I turned it off and I've been doing fine. I'm not headache free. I still have a constant low grade head pain. I would say though most of the time it's if you go from one to ten it's a two or a three and that's tolerable. That's you know you can live your life with that kind of pain. It's when it was up to a six or a seven that or an eight that I couldn't function and so I'd be lying down or I would not be going out. So I don't think my head pain it, with the exceptions of when I turned it back on, the stimulator back on, I don't think it's um, interrupted my life. Sure. Now, um, let me let me go back and just ask you, where would you put yourself on that same one to ten scale prior to us starting therapy? It was at least a five all the time. Okay. And that would go six or seven, and if it was really bad, eight. But it was always 
around a five. Okay, so uh, using that scale, you would say we had at least 50% improvement yeah. Yeah. and reduction of pain. And it's not just the reduction of pain, it's the the tension that goes along with it, the frustration that goes along with it. When you can just live your life instead of worry about what your head's going to do, it makes a huge difference. Huge. On, uh, I see it all the time and I would agree. Um, yeah. I'm glad you're having a, a good result. I wanted to ask you a couple of other things that are non-related uh, to the head pain, but you also put down that's some issues with neck mobility and neck tension. Has that gotten any better? Has it stayed the same? Have you even noticed? Um, I don't know. I would say lately the, the neck has been bothering me, um, kind of like, a, but I think that's arthritis. I really do. Okay. Um, so it may be a little worse, but I don't think it has that much to do with my headache. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And then um, what about frequent clearing or coughing of the throat? Have you noticed mm -hmm. that at all? Maybe a little less, but okay. not. Uh, but I still do it. Sure. All right. Anything? Anything else that you can? That you've noticed? No, I just think it's wonderful. I don't have to worry so much about what my head's going to do. Sure. Glad you had it done. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> huh.